time is now for all Canadians to let the future begin. Que l'avenir commence. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Le Chef du Parti Progressiste Conservateur du Canada, the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party of Canada, Jean Charest. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Please. In the global race for jobs and prosperity, Canada is falling behind. We must catch up and catch up fast. Succeeding in this new economy requires new approaches and most of all, a different strategy. We're told the economy is growing, but where are the jobs? We can no longer rely on low interest rates alone. And we know now that more government spending on things like infrastructure has done nothing to fix the problem. In fact, we do know one thing for sure, that the old policies simply don't work anymore. Our number one challenge as a country remains that one in 10 Canadians can't find work. And the many more who feel unsure about the future feel unsure about their own jobs. Job success in today's global economy calls for a different approach. In fact, study after study shows that high taxes kill jobs. Our plan will produce new jobs by reducing the tax burden on individuals and businesses, breaking down interprovincial trade barriers, cutting red tape affecting biz that affects business growth, and ensuring Canadian students can complete their education and offer us and have the best education system in the world. I will immediately cut taxes, starting with job-killing payroll taxes. Employment insurance premiums for individuals and businesses will be reduced by almost $5 billion. I will work cooperatively with the provinces to reinforce education and training as a national priority, as only a prime minister can do, so that young Canadians are better prepared to compete for jobs in a knowledge-based economy. Our kids are falling behind in the core subjects that guarantee their future jobs in the math and in the sciences. It is time now that we as a country focus on results. We will work with the provinces to institute a national testing for students and create a new national scholarship program for up to 25,000 needy students. We will also provide an affordable, universal student assistance program in cooperation with the private sector so that more young Canadians can get the higher education they need for today's global economy. We want our schools wired for success by making computer training and technology completely accessible and affordable to students. My goal is to make Canada the most computer literate country in the world. Education and training is about preparing for jobs and our plan does just that. The federal government is cutting cash transfer payments at more than four times the rate that they are cutting their own program spending. Well, our plan will change those priorities through a new health care guarantee. First, we will stop the cuts and immediately increase transfers to the provinces by $1.4 billion per year. In exchange for this increased funding, provinces and territories will agree to quality health care standards based upon the five principles, the five fundamental principles of the Canada Health Act. And at the same time, a mutually agreed binding enforcement mechanism will ensure standards are met and funding priorities are also kept. Canadians are also concerned and worried about their retirement. As I've traveled throughout the country over the past three years, I've also seen and heard from Canadians who are worried about their future, and they're worried about the future of the Canada Pension Plan. Younger Canadians especially worry that it's not going to be there for them. The solution to the CPP is not an $11 billion tax hike on working Canadians, nor is it to scrap it altogether. Those solutions are self-defeating. 
We will take a responsible approach to guaranteeing the CPP by making it self-financing through increased contributions. This will ensure that the plan always has enough money even as the population becomes older. These increased CPP contributions will be more than offset by our tax cuts and EI premium cuts so that taxpayers and businesses will still get a net savings. Our plan to ensure safe communities for Canadians and their families begins with lowering the age of application of the Young Offenders Act from 12 to 10. We will repeal Bill C-68. Law-abiding citizens should not be treated like criminals. There will be new tough penalties for those using a gun in the commission of a crime. We will create a Victim's Bill of Rights that will give victims of crime more information and more involvement in their cases. And one of the first pieces of legislation I will introduce to the House of Commons as Prime Minister is to abolish the faint hope clause in the criminal code. We will not allow convicted first-degree murderers to seek parole. I believe the rights of victims in this regard must always come before the privileges of criminals. We can and we will take immediate steps to balance the budget in the year 2000 by reducing government spending by $12 billion over the next three years. By the way, the details of these spending cuts are contained in our plan. At the same time, we will make it the law that the budget must be balanced each and every year. We can't go down this path again of spiraling deficits and growing debt. Furthermore, the Prime Minister and Cabinet will be held personally responsible and accountable for this goal. We will also set a goal of paying at least one-third of each budgetary surplus after the year 2000 towards reducing the federal debt. Canadians know how strongly I feel about the issue of national unity. They should also know, and I want to restate it today, that I will always put my country ahead of partisan politics. In the last referendum, I fought with all my energy and all my conviction to defeat those who wanted to break up Canada. Just as I oppose the separatist, I will also oppose those who seek to drive a wedge between Canadians to achieve their own political ambitions. Because those who drive wedges between Canadians are driving jobs and investment and opportunities out of Canada. Today, I've set out my plan for Canada's next century. This is an innovative and it's a realistic plan that sets new priorities for your government as part of a long-term vision for our future. Our plan speaks squarely to the economic and social insecurity felt everywhere by Canadians and their families, whether they're at work, at home, in schools, or in their communities. Our plan is different. It's a 10-year plan. If Canada's problems, we know, won't be solved by political quick fixes, they require a different vision that reaches beyond the next election campaign. Set our sights high enough and commit to the right plan to take us there. Jobs for Canadians, peace of mind about health care, a world-class education system, a pension plan we can trust, safety from crime for communities and also families a balanced budget in the year 2000, and a restructured government and a renewed federation that works better for Canadians. I've traveled this country and talked with thousands of Canadians about the Canada that they want to live in and the Canada they want to build for their children. And it's a Canada where hard work is rewarded, where families feel safe in their neighborhoods and where compassionate for the less fortunate is abundant and where the opportunity to learn and to grow and to succeed is available to all. This is what my plan offers. I invite you to read it. Compare it with the plans of other political parties. And most of all, 
I invite you to judge us on our ideas. Thank you. Thank you.